thank you f to to CPTR. Thank you to the to the TB Alliance to give also, you know, give me give Bayer an opportunity to quickly report. And I mean, any report from Bayer, of course, would have to start with the Remox TB study, which is essentially not a true part of the CPTR, but uh, still, I think uh, it is certainly the largest ever study since many, many years that has been done in the field of, of TB. Uh, it's drug sensitive TB, but still it's TB. It, and I think it will probably generate a database that has a lot of added value beyond just figuring out whether or not, uh, you know, adding or replacing uh, moxifloxacin into, into a TB regimen can actually provide a treatment shortening. So, uh, I mean, I showed this slide a few times before. It's still a historic opportunity, I believe. But uh, I think the good news is we are really getting closer there. And that's, again, thanks to the hard work of a huge consortium of, of, of people all over the, the world, you know, who, who invest a lot of, lot of time and effort in, into, into operationally running the, the Remox TB study. So uh, just a quick reminder. Uh, the goal is to demonstrate if moxifloxacin added into a regimen or actually replacing either ethambutol or isoniazid by, by uh, moxifloxacin can shorten uh, the treatment duration to four months. It's not three to four months, it is four months, basically. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, we had discussed a little bit about statistical design, so this uses a non-inferiority approach, so treatment shortening uh, uh, is good, but of course it has to be uh, non-inferior to the current standard. That, that's basically the goal of, of, of the study. It's, uh, you know, randomized double bind, double dummy, what have you. And uh, you can see that, that uh, moxifloxacin is being added in either for ethambutol or for isoniazid in the first two months. The, the, the second two months of the continuation phase in the one arm are a three drug combination, HRM, while in the in the isoniazid arm, it's only a two-drug uh, moxi plus RIF, and of course you have the, the two months of, of, of placebo. So what is the current status? So we didn't fully reach the 2,000 patients, but got pretty close to it. So 1931 patients were enrolled. Uh, while it says rapid evaluation, you can see that it's not maybe not the most rapid study ever done, but uh, I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at how many sites and what the effort is into qualifying the sites, into getting cl clinical trial sites up and running in some of these countries that are able to, to run a study according to GCP and all that. I think that is a lecture in its own and maybe should be given one day and, and it could provide a lot of learnings uh, before you embark in the next large phase three study in the field of TB. So last patient was actually enrolled February 21. And uh, this year, uh, six months later, last patient treatment was August. And uh, actually, uh, we are expecting to have the top line results late next year, 2013. Maybe it's October, maybe it's November, so we are hoping for the best. But late next year, we will hopefully have the, the data. And uh, the first regulatory submissions then will occur in uh, 2014. They are planned. Of course, the results have to, to bear that, that they, they, uh, you know, that they uh, really provide the basis of putting a submission docu document together. So that's the Remox TB study, basically. And let's move on. And I think you have probably all read this paper, the NCO1 study. The uh, novel combination regimen, PAMC, this is uh, persinamide, and it is uh, moxifloxacin, and the new kid on the block would, the, would be PAA24. I mean, that study also uh, uh, enrolled patients with uh, pedacrolin in alone and in PA combination and in persinamide combination, and I will, of course, not report on that, but sure, there will be uh, another talk about pedacrolin specifically coming up. And uh, uh, the main, you know, the main outcome variable was, was the, the log CFU reduction. And I just picked from the many, many data of, of the paper, you know, the first two days, you see, you see here the, the, the first two days log reduction per day uh, in the moxifloxacin con uh, containing regimen. You also see it over the 14 days. You have here the active control. So this, 
this, both these values are statistically significantly better than with the control arm. And I also put the PAC just without the moxifloxacin in here, and you can really see that adding moxifloxacin adds specifically early, early LOX CFU reduction activity in, into that regimen. Of course, we heard yesterday that this is not all. This is only a beginning, and, and clearly, uh, uh, you know, to provide a better regimen, you need to know much more than just 14 days EBA, but uh, at least uh, it provided, you know, a successful proof, clinical proof of concept that first such a study uh, uh, can be done with novel combinations and novel uh, even more than one novel, novel compound in, in, in a combination that this can be done also safely for the patients. And I think overall these, these data are, are quite, quite impressive. So, so indeed with these novel combinations you, you have perhaps a certain chance you know, to also uh, move into, into even shorter treatment regimens. Okay? And this is just a graphical representation of that and, and so this is the standard. This is the standard. This is the betacrylin containing arms. This is PAC, and this is with moxifloxacin. And what you can really see is over the first week, you know, moxifloxacin adds quite a bit of, of, of killing activity into the regimen, and then it more or less goes, goes, goes in parallel. Okay? So what's next? What's coming up? The outlook for the PAMC regimen so, so, so clearly this is a, a positive proof of concept for, for the PAMC regimen to be taken forward. I think it's also a positive proof of concept that with this approach of testing several novel compounds in, 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 uh, in one trial is, is, is possible. So there is a phase 2B study, the NCO2 study is underway. Overall it will enroll about 230 patients, 89 patients have been enrolled and maybe a few more since, since I got the update. And the, the, the outcome variable is, is the SSCC, you know, so the, the, the change in, 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 in CFUs. And uh, you can see here three different arms that will be run in a randomized fashion. And basically there are two different doses of PA824. Moxie 400, Persinamide 1500 stays the same. And there is also one opal label arm uh, in MDR patients with the high dose of PA. We expect the results sometime mid next year, hopefully. And uh, so I just, just stayed at the end of my short presentation you know, that, that Bayer clearly is committed to further support these studies. And, and we hope you know, that the PAMC combo will, will be taken, taken forward also into, into further phases of, of development. And with that, I thank you. <laughs>